Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good. Beloved listeners, good morning. We welcome you to a wonderful day. The 18th day of May in the year of the Lord 2020. We welcome you to the presence of God, a moment to reflect and to meditate on the Word of God. Therefore, we urge you to join us in the daily fountain devotional, the devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, as we meditate together on the Word of God. Let us pray. Dear God and Father, we thank you for this time to reflect on your word. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for protecting and preserving us. For gathering us to look into your word, we are grateful. As we look into this word, we pray that you will speak to us. Holy Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will instruct us. We pray that you will direct us. We pray that you will rebuke us. We pray that you will correct us in love and help us to maintain our faith and resolve to serve you all the days of our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, you're welcome to this day. For our daily fountain devotional this morning, we'll be looking at a topic that says, Consequences of idolatry. Consequences of idolatry. And we'll be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 25 to 31. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 25 to 31. And the word of God says, When you beget children and grandchildren, and have grown old in the land, and act corruptly and make a carved image in the form of anything and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it but will be utterly destroyed. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve gods, the work of men's hand, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days. When you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not forsake you nor destroy you. Nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to them. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. This text is a continuation of our reading yesterday. We read from Deuteronomy chapter 4 from verse 15 to 24 yesterday, talking about idol worship and idolatry. And today we continue from where we stopped. Idolatry and idol worship is a very serious sin against God. And that's why among other things God listed them as the first and the second of the Ten Commandments he gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. It says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other God besides me. And then he said, you shall not make for yourself any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or on the earth beneath, or in the sea under the earth. 
He said, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. This is God speaking here. He said, I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon their children, even unto the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, and showing steadfast love upon them who keep my commandments. The sin of idolatry is a very serious sin, and God does not take it for granted. Idolatry means worshipping idol. An idol, I see it in two different forms. It can be images, graven images, carved, molded by man, by the hands of men. And on the other hand, it can be any other thing, whether tangible or intangible, that takes the place of God in the life of any believer. In other words, whatever takes the place of God in your life has become an idol to you. And that's where we need to watch it very carefully. Be it a statue or an object, whatever takes the place of God in the life of a believer becomes an idol to that person. Whatever you place an immoderate attachment to, a devotion to, becomes an idol in your life. So we don't just see idolatry as a practice of worshipping other gods by pagans or unbelievers. But when we look at it from this perspective, we discover that there are people who call themselves Christians who are into idolatry. Now, what are some of these things that can take the attention of believers away from God? Sex. The, great, the crave to satisfy our sexual urge can take the place of God in our lives. The time meant to worship God. We use it for immorality or immoral practices. Such practices have become idols to us. Talk about money. The quest for money. Paul, when addressing Timothy, spoke about it as the root of all evil. And we have instances of people who have been praying to God to bless them. And as soon as God blesses them with money, they abandon God. And when you look at them and their actions, you will discover that they are attributing worship meant to God, to money. They give more attention to their shop than the things of God. Their daily devotion has been reduced and at some point not placed at the level it is supposed to be because of their rush to get money. Some have not even given attention to their families again. Some have abandoned their roles in their family and abandoned their children in the hand of maids and housekeepers because of their quest for money. What shall it profit us when we gain all these things and lose our place in the kingdom of God? The quest for power. Power. Can be an idol to us. Our physical appearance. And little wonder when you go to our churches today, people pay more attention to fashion than worshiping God. Their attention is gradually shifting to passion, to, to fashion. The way we dress, the way we are supposed to appear, the kind of headgears we are supposed to wear, the kind of makeups we are supposed to wear, and all these things are gradually taking the place of worship to God in the church. And that's where you see some people come to church and their attention is on the latest fashion, the latest headdress, the latest clothes to wear, the latest shoe on board, the latest watch, the latest everything that is related to fashion. 
and gradually we are shifting our attention away from the right object of worship, that is God, to fashion, to our physical appearance. Some, their idol is their family. Some worship their husbands. Some worship their wives. Some worship their, their, their children. Remember I said something. Whatever takes the place of God in your life, be it your husband, your wife, or your children, is an idol to you. And God said he will not share his glory with any man. And he's annoyed and jealous whenever we attribute his worship to any man. In the time of Nebuchadnezzar, he reduced him to ordinary animal. In the time of Herod, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, he rotted while he was still alive. Be careful. Whatever takes the place of God in your life becomes an idol to you. And so, joys can quickly be cut off and turned into sorrow when people persist in idolatry. When people refuse to turn away from idolatry, their joy can be cut short and reduced to sorrow. Imagine the pains, the frustrations, the sorrows it could cause after long years of journey through the wilderness for a people not to enjoy the promised land that the Lord has promised them as a result of idol worship and idolatry. And so he said in verse 26, I call heaven and earth as witness against you that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long, but will certainly be destroyed if you turn away from the Lord your God. This warning is a very sound one. And it's a dreadful one. And it is very dreadful for one to fall into the wrath of God. And that's why we need to be very careful about that. The prophecy in this text certainly haunted those Israelites who were carried away years later into Assyria and Babylonian captivities. And they had to go through suffering because of their rebellion against God. And today many Christians are going through suffering as a result of turning our worship away from God to other things that have taken the place of God in our lives. And God is not happy about it. And we've subjected ourselves to suffering as a result of this. Can you pause and reflect over your life? What I'm going through is it really part of God's will for my life? Or have I turned my attention away from God and pursued other things that have taken the place of God in my life? People complain, my business is not moving anymore. My business is not progressing. I'm not making profits anymore. Watch it. It's possible that business has taken the place of God in your life. And when issues like this come up, the example commonly set is with the people we call unbelievers, the Muslims. Come with millions of naira to a Muslim man's shop. Once it is time for prayer, you can go to hell with your millions. Until he finishes praying, he won't give you any attention. And we say they don't know the God they worship. Now, if they can ascribe such honor to that unknown God, the worship, how much more you as a Christian, you and I, that claim we worship the true God? What has taken the place of God in your life, brothers? What has taken the place of God in your life, sisters? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, Paul pointed it out there. He said, therefore, put to death your member which are on earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For these are things that incur the wrath of God upon the sons of disobedience. We need to work on ourselves. 
we need to make conscious effort by the grace of God upon our lives not to attribute the glory of God to idols, not to attribute the worship meant for God to idols. Because God would not take it for granted. What were some of the consequences that Israel faced and that we are bound to face today if we continue in our idolatrous acts? Number one, it incurs the wrath of God. Even unto the third and fourth generation, if they persist in that act. It incurs the wrath of God. Even unto generations coming after you and I, if we persist in that act of idolatry. This is dreadful. That the suffering will not just be with you. It will be with your children, their children's children, their great-grandchildren, the third and fourth generation. It's something we need to think about and to turn away from our wicked acts and embrace the Lord and serve him with all our hearts. The second consequence is that sin abounds in different form. Idolatry comes with sexual immorality. Idolatry comes with killing, shedding of blood. Because the quest to satisfy the urge for wealth has led a lot of people to shed in innocent blood. We need to watch it. We need to watch it so that we don't miss the mark. The third consequence is total alienation and separation from God. When you think you are still with God, you wouldn't know that the glory has long departed from you. May that not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My prayer is that we will enjoy eternity with God. My prayer is that we will enjoy the presence of God while here in the world. But when you are, we ascribe his glory to idol, he departs from us. And just like Israel, when a cupboard was born, the glory will no longer be with us. And the fourth consequence is eternal condemnation. We'll not just suffer in the world, but even hereafter, we continue in the suffering. And that is the worst of it all. Revelation describes it as a, as a second death. After dying in this world, after the sufferings and the pains of this world, we still go to suffer in eternity. God forbid. And so I want to charge us to watch our lives. Some go as far as practicing syncretism, one leg in the church, one leg in idolatry. God will not tolerate it. And the consequences of this act are very dreadful and painful and detrimental to our destiny at the end. Have you allowed idolatry to take over your personal altar with God? Our devotional today is a call to return to God in totality and serve him as our only God. It is a call to get rid of every form of idolatry and devote ourselves only to the Lord. Are you willing to answer this call? That business will not collapse if you return to God. You will not lose that job. If you serve God with one mind, even if you lose it, one door opens and God is opening up another door of greatness for you. And he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing you so much desire will be added unto you. He's willing to heal you. He's willing to restore you. Just let go of all these other things and focus on him alone. Let us pray. As you bow your head briefly, just tell him, God, deliver me from idolatry. We've seen that it's not just the worship of idols alone or molten and graven images. 
It has to do with every other thing that takes the place of God in your life. Therefore, this morning, pray and ask him to have mercy upon you. And ask him to deliver you from idolatry. Make a resolve in your heart this morning to serve God with all your heart. For in so doing, you will gain access to his presence and the joy that comes with his presence. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this privilege of reflecting over your word. Thank you for this caution. Thank you for this warning. Thank you for this correction. Thank you for this rebuke. And as the children will open up our hearts unto you, we pray that you will grant us the grace to overcome idolatrous practices, to remain focused on you, and to serve you as our only God and Savior. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Lockwood Preservative, the wood preservative brand leader in Africa. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.